Hello, everybody. Luke Schulte, Little Grounds for Beck Tigers. Many have been asking the question, you know, are beans ever going to turn the corner? Are they ever going to get out of this yellow funk? And I think realistically, without some additional help, they're not going to turn the corner as quickly as most of us would like. Think about the season we've had till now. May was incredibly cool, also very, very wet. And the first half of June wasn't dramatically different, but now our weather is dramatically different. We've got a lot of heat, a lot of heat that's predicted. And for these later developing acres, there's also still a lot of sun that's hitting the ground. But particularly for those later planted acres and why I feel like they're going to need some additional help, otherwise that yellow funk is going to persist longer than we want, really comes down to why it's current in the first place. One, these later planted acres just don't have the canopy. So we've got more sun that's hitting the ground, kind of baking that ground, elevating those soil temperatures, and really thwarting a lot of our, our biological activity. They're also sealed off. We've now sharply turned to a hotter environment. A lot of that ground is kind of baked, and, and as we know, uh, it's kind of sealed in. While there's plenty of soil moisture in most areas, the ground's kind of sealed off from oxygen. But most notably, the, the, the number one reason why I think soybeans are going to need some help getting through this yellow looking stage, especially if they're in wetter soils or later planted acres, is there's not a lot of nitrogen fixation, not a lot of nitrogen production by the plant. For our nodules to perform at peak performance, they really prefer a, an environment like many of us keep our home, low to mid 70s. And as we have more sun that's exposed or more of our soil surface that's exposed to the sun, our soil temperatures are hotter in these later developing or late planted acres, and that's leading to poor nodule efficiency, so thus less nitrogen production. But July 1st, can we really economically do anything about it, or does it make sense to? And I think in many cases it does. And I certainly feel like if we want to get them through this yellow stage, we're going to have to be proactive. If we look at our PFR proven foliar nutritional products, there's one theme that's risen to the top in later vegetative or V4 vegetative soybeans, and that's those nutritional products that have sulfur and manganese. Sulfur and manganese perform a lot of functions in the plant. They're vital to photosynthesis. They elevate chlorophyll content. Quite frankly, they make our plants greener. And then when we move to that re early reproductive phase, or R1, it's about manganese, sulfur, as well as boron. Boron helps with flower retention. But I really want to focus on the manganese and sulfur, especially on those later developing or later planted acres that I expect are going to remain in that ugly stage for a longer period of time. Not only do manganese and sulfur help boost chlorophyll content or make our plants greener and lusher, but they also help with stress recovery. They serve as antioxidants to the plant. So think about the season, we've undergone a lot of stress and it's been pretty sharp, dramatic stresses, especially in these later planted acres where we've got now our, our biology that's being influenced by our elevated soil temperatures. We need some help in overall chlorophyll content, but most notably stress recovery or stress mitigation as well. So I'd encourage you as you think about making these herbicide passes, the inclusion of particularly manganese and sulfur in your soybeans are still vegetative, would be highly beneficial to get them out of that funk. And then as we move to more of that flowering time frame, the inclusion of manganese, sulfur, and boron. But I'll leave you with this and why I think it's important that we're proactive in the management of these yellow soybeans. Our plants communicate. What I mean by that is it's like the old analogy of a snowball gaining momentum as it goes downhill. If we got green, lush, uh, vigorous looking plants, they're harvesting sunlight at peak performance. They're producing a lot of photosynthate. They're producing a lot of energy. The plant exudes about a third, roughly, 35, 40% of its energy actually exudes it out the root system to feed that biology right around that root system to in turn then feed it. So we got green, lush looking plants. They're producing a lot more photosynthate than a yellow looking plant. So conversely, they have more root exudates to feed that biology and kind of in that, that positive vicious cycle, then the biology from a root perspective feeds a plant. But right now we have the opposite going on. And these yellow looking soybeans, they're not harvesting sunlight very well. They're not, they're not loaded with chlorophyll. They're not producing much photosynthate to then in turn feed that microbiome and that biology uh, from, a, from a root perspective. So I'd encourage you, as you have yellow looking soybeans, it's now the 1st of July, be proactive. It's really important that we get these plants communicating at a higher level through increased chlor chlorophyll content. The addition of manganese and sulfur, you can see how consistent they perform. That's in an in a overall relatively healthy looking crop. I expect those to be even more beneficial as your soybeans are yellow. And I'd encourage you, think about being proactive. If we get this plant lusher and greener, it's going to communicate at a higher level, providing more nutrition from a root perspective and 
getting a canopy that can lessen those soil temperatures, get these soybeans to fix AN at a higher level or certainly at a higher efficiency. So as always, if you have any questions around this topic or any other, give a wonderful call. Thanks for tuning in.